Aisha, for more on this, who better to turn to than Dan Hoffman, Fox News contributor and former CIA chief of station. Let's get to what the Russian government has said about this, Dan. Um, this is from Sergey Lavrov. He's the Russian foreign minister. He said, quote, as for the duration of the conflict, the ball is on the side of the Kiev regime and Washington that stands behind its back. They may stop senseless resistance at any moment. Are we any closer to any type of real legitimate negotiation or is this the same posturing that we've seen, Dan, for the last 10 months? You know, the Kremlin's maximalist demands and their brutal tactics haven't changed from the very onset of this war over 300 days ago. Uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov is saying quite simply, stop resisting unilateral disarmament so that Russia can complete the annexation of those territories uh, that Vladimir Putin announced, even though part of the territory of Kherson is under Ukraine's control and they can topple the Zelensky government. That's what Russia wants. They don't want to be subjected to the justice they deserve over the war crime they've committed indiscriminately targeting Ukrainians in their hospitals, their schools, and their neighborhoods, and targeting Ukraine's civilian infrastructure and denying uh, so much of the population, 40 percent, without power. Uh, those are egregious war crimes, and Russia doesn't want to, uh, to be subjected to the justice for which they just richly deserve. What's the mindset of the Putin regime here as they have utterly failed to take the capital to topple the Ukrainian government? They've had supply chain problems. They've had troop level problems. All of these issues now as they lead an occupation um, that's turned out to really be somewhat of a mess here. Is there a disconnect or, or, or how do they come to terms with how this war has gone over the past 10 months? Uh, Vladimir Putin is at his most weakened state uh, over the past, you know, 20 years. I mean, this this war has done nothing but but cause his reign in the Kremlin uh, to be more tenuous than ever before. And his regime security is absolutely on the line. Russia considered Ukraine an existential threat because what scares Putin is democracy. Could never have Ukraine seeking to have uh, commercial ties with the with the European Union and military ties with with NATO. Uh, and build a, a functioning democracy on Russia's border. That's what scared Vladimir Putin the most and why ultimately he decided that he needed to invade, topple the Zelensky government and install his own puppet regime. He's failed miserably and Ukraine has exposed uh, Russia's weakness and they're done more than any NATO member has ever done uh, to cut Russia's military down to size and they've also made a bit of a wedge in the Russia-China alliance. China's got to be having buyers remorse over their relationship, their partnership uh, with Russia. And, uh, and China has to be seeing that now the West has been awakened from their post-Cold War slumber uh, and is ready to do something to help Ukraine to fight for, for democracy and freedom and liberty in the face of this brutal Russian onslaught. Now, Dan, on the flip side of that, you've also got the United States that has been forced to spend tens of billions of dollars, lots of attention and focus on that region, when this long-awaited pivot to Asia and focusing on China seems to be compromised yet again. How much does that hurt the U.S. posture in East Asia? Well, I, look, I, I think the United States, I, I saw this from my decades of service at the CIA. We could talk all we want about what we'd like to focus on, uh, but sometimes a crisis will happen somewhere in the world, and we're just going to have to deal with it. And as much as the Biden administration would have preferred not to have to support Ukraine in this war, uh, that's the way it worked out. And our return on investment has been quite significant, as I mentioned. And Ukraine's, the price that Ukraine has paid has been significant. Look at 100,000 roughly casualties of Ukrainians and the same on the Russian side. Uh, you know, Ukraine is fighting with everything they've got and they're not going to give up until the Russians have, have left their territory. And that includes the Donbass and Crimea. And so I've always yeah. felt from the intelligence side, we've got to be able to do everything at once. Things are all interconnected. And I think the more we help Ukraine fight against Russia and show that, that a nuclear armed state can't simply invade another and, and yeah. mount what Fiona Hill has rightly called an imperial land grab, the more we help Taiwan and our allies in Asia and the more we cut China down to size as well. So I think all of these things are, are interconnected in, in an effective uh, foreign policy. The world is so interconnected yeah. now, uh, we really need to be prepared to deal with multiple fronts, whether it's North Korea, Iran's nuclear program, transnational terrorism, China, 
Russia. That's the challenge yeah. for the Biden administration. Have to stay nimble. Sometimes history gets in the way of uh, the best laid plans. Dan Hoffman, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.